guys my name is Leish also known as Monster Maker here on YouTube and the internet. In today's video I am doing an unboxing this is my first impressions I've just got this in the mail kept it aside for a couple of days waiting to finally stop and film unboxing this and I'm so excited so this was a Kickstarter that I backed this is the art journey of Lord Gris which I've been following for such a long long time um, and yeah I'm so excited there's a beautiful character here on the box. I love collecting art books because not only is it a great way to support artists that you love and would like to see more of they're such a good reference and they're just like so good it's inspiring one day I'd love to have my own little art zine or a small sketchbook type thing but yeah so beautifully packaged so it's nice and protected and oh, look at that it's so beautiful it's got this lovely um, gold foil it's in a sleeve as well and I think I've got some other stuff. So I think I could only afford the basic um, book. I didn't get a lot of the goodies, extra goodies. And I'm not sure if these are add-ons that, that were stretch goals or that I asked for specifically. But oh, look, little postcards and bookmarks. I've got three postcards, some lovely art on there. They're so cute. And a bookmark. So let's get on into this. I can't wait. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, it's so beautiful. It feels lovely, almost like a velvety finish. Or it's just very smooth. The print quality already of the cover, so, so vibrant. And of course, this is by Three Total Publishing, which have done the Art of Lewish and a bunch of other artists as well. And they plant a tree for each book that they do. So that's so cool. So I'm just going to give a bit of a first impression kind of flip through of the book so that if this is something you were considering buying yourself in the future, you know what you're going to expect. Um, or, yeah. Already, I love the sketches on this um, opening page, the end pages. Books from 3D Turtle are always such good quality paper wires and covers and everything and it's just beautifully printed. And then going straight into some big beautiful spreads here, so colourful. I love it when artists show their humble beginnings because everyone has to start somewhere and I think it's so inspiring for new and young artists to see that, like wow. And it just shows that no matter what skill you have, as long as you keep going, you keep trying, you keep practicing, you are going to develop a style that you like and you're going to get better. Like it's so interesting seeing how her style was before. And of course, going through art school and college, the exploration is so, is so interesting. And I like how she talks about her experience of college and like how she struggled, which is I think a really important thing for young and new artists to understand that you don't have to go to an art school or to uni or college to become an artist. And there are plenty of people who go to art school and then actually don't end up pursuing art at all afterwards. So yeah, everyone has their own journey. And she really does, it's not just like two pages, she really does talk about her journey and her humble beginnings with her inspiration. Finding a style, this is going to be so interesting for a lot of people. That's like a big question that a lot of people ask bigger artists, like how do I find my style? You know, what do I do to curate it? A massive pile of sketchbooks, just like what I've got. I can't wait to actually give this a, a good read. Oh, I love that piece. Oh my gosh. So it shows her doing a redraw. That's so interesting. I like seeing redraws. I've done a couple myself. I'm due to do like another one. And I think that's a really good way for you to track your own progress of your skill, but not only your style and how you would tackle something differently. Yeah, so she's done quite a few over the years as well, doing the same character. 
Oh my gosh, this is like gloss UV printing. This is this is very fancy. They've done some really nice layouts in here. Oh, workspaces. And now that's Pablo trotting in the background. Workspaces. I love seeing artist studios and their behind the scenes and their studio tours, all that sort of stuff. I think it is so interesting to see their space because it tells you a lot about a person. And also it makes me very envious that I would just love to have um, a beautiful little space just dedicated to art and not have to be a multi-purpose space. Um, I do have my own studio tour. I did one for this year, 2022. If you want to check that out, I do like a full tour, which is not as aesthetically pleasing as this, but you know, I'm sure everyone has their own idea of what they want their space to look like. And I love this butterfly scroll print that she's got there. Oh my gosh, the art studio. I don't think this is where she is at now though. I think she has moved since this. Not 100% sure. Um, or maybe she's just moved house. This is a big, beautiful space and seeing like the exposed harbor floors reminds me of other studio spaces that I've rented in the past when I was doing gallery exhibitions and stuff like that. I just have a little one at home now. I don't do big paintings anymore. Tools and materials, really going through the digital stuff, which is so good. I love seeing this and I can't wait to read about it because I, I use Procreate as well. But she has such a interesting way of working where she will sketch and then basically work straight from that. Um, and so it keeps things very organic. Mixed media. I love this piece. You can tell she's still got the pencil in there. Like she's left all the pencil gritty marks in there for the digital piece and it just adds this like texture and just, ah, oh, it's so nice. Working tradigitally. <laughs> and she actually goes through step by step how to do that as well. She does have a class on Skillshare how to draw stylized portraits or stylized characters. I believe um, that's a couple years old, but I still think that was really, really good. So if you have Skillshare, go check it out. Working with acrylic. What I love about her is that you can basically like, it's very hard to tell the difference between her traditional artwork and a digital artwork. Like she's able to transcend and show her style on no matter what medium she's doing. Whereas for me, I find that my digital work, it looks so different to my traditional stuff because I'm just so used to like a certain mechanical way of doing steps for digital art. And I'd love to break that. So I'd love to create a blended mode of the traditionally as what she's done. And I love that she really takes the time to show you step by steps in this. This book is laid out really well. And it is kind of different to how, I guess like maybe the layout <clears throat> artist or designer compared to the Loish books. So this feels very unique, even though it's from three total and there's some similarities. There's, it feels really like its own experience. Inktober, we gotta love that. I love her surreal elements to her portraits and her girls as well. There's that almost anime style um, in how, like, in how she draws her faces, but it's just a little bit different, add a little bit more depth, and then the surrealist elements. I love that. I actually have a lot of her stickers. I think she still has a Patreon as well. So if you love her artwork, want to support her, um, get some stickers and postcards, have a look at her Patreon. I'll put all of the things I'm briefly mentioning in the description down below as much as possible. But I am pretty sure that if you are watching this video, you probably already follow Lord Gris and know where she's at on all her socials. This is cute. I don't think I've really seen this one before. And I love this, just all the eyes and stuff. And she's done some fan art, so this is from Monster Prom. But most of her stuff is original characters and concepts, which I really love. I would love to get to a point where my art does well enough online that I can just do my original characters, but it always feels pressure to just do fan art, especially for conventions, because that's what people want to see. But I have so much original character stuff I'd love to show. And I love this piece as well. I have this as a sticker. Character designs. Oh, she goes into some facial proportions. So basic tutorials here. 
hair. Like there is actually so much useful things in this book. I think when I backed this, I didn't even look into it too much. I was like, yep, uh, take my money. I need this because I knew I loved her art so much that this book could do no wrong for me. And she's got such a massive library of artworks over the years to really share. Designing a character, doing some poses, some costumes. And then her pins, ah! Turning your art into a career. So she goes through like sticking at it. She goes through different merch she makes, I think. Oh yeah, some different companies she's worked for. And then how she was able to sustain her own practice. So yeah, and this is another book that I'm I've got my list to get as well. So if you're interested, that will be, I'll do a flip through of that one. But yeah, that is it for the art journey of Lord Gris. I think this is absolutely so worth it. And I'm so happy that I have this. I hope you enjoyed this flip through, looking through this book for me. As I said, links will be down below if you're interested in looking more at Lord Gris or getting this book yourself.